this is the second part of my video on genetics and in this part I would be covering up basic genetics and the various terminologies associated with it. So let's begin. There are millions of species living on earth and they possess millions of different traits and characteristics. Most of them inherited from their parents and some of them are new. So let's zero down to Homo sapiens. Now the human body consists of millions of cells and each of these cells has a nucleus and deep inside the nucleus is an amazing molecule which is called as DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. Sections of this DNA are called as genes and together all genes in the body make up the genome. So what exactly is the genome? The total genetic makeup of an individual is known as the genome. It is functionally divided into genes and in human it is about 25,000 to 30,000 different genes that make up the genome. The genome is split into 23 pairs of chromosomes and each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA that is tightly packaged around certain proteins which are known as histones. So what exactly are chromosomes? They are thread-like structures located inside the nucleus made up of proteins that is nothing but histones and a double helix of deoxyribonucleic acid. Now these chromosomes have two regions or areas. One is known as the heterochromatin. These areas of chromosomes look thick, coiled and condensed whereas certain other areas of the chromosome resemble thin or lightly stained threads which are called as the euchromatin. They potentially um, contain the active gene component and the identified genome sequence represents around 90% of euchromatin. Let's go on to learn the structure of each of these chromosomes. Each metaphase chromosome comprises of two identical components and these two symmetrical halves are called as sister chromatids. Now we can see uh, two sister chromatids here. Let us consider one out of this. In the center, they are attached together at a constricted region which is called as a centromere as you can see here, the centromere. Now the centromere divides the chromosome into a short arm which is represented by the letter P. This is the short arm and a long arm which is represented by the letter Q. Now the ends of these chromosomes are known as telomeres, the ends of both the sister chromatids. Now there are certain areas in the uh, chromosome which display a banded pattern when they are treated with certain stains. That is nothing but alternative dark and light bands that appear along the length of a chromosome as you can see here. Now these uh, are useful to um, identify certain chromosomal aberrations such as breakages, loss, displacement, translocation, inversion etc. Now let's see how this uh, cytogenic map location helps us in identifying these uh, aberrations. So basically a chromosome is numbered. Every chromosome, all the 23 chromosomes, every chromosome has a number starting from 1 to 23. Each of the chromosomal arm, like one uh, sister chromatid, again is split into a short arm and a long arm. Short arm represented by P, long arm represented by Q. Each of these arms again are divided into certain uh, regions like you can see here P arm into 1, 2 and 3, Q into 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Each of this region is again further divided into bands like band 1, band 2 of this region and each of this band is further subdivided into subbands like this. So supposing we take up a cytogenic mapping location as 3P22.1, 3 is the chromosomal number, P is whether the short arm or the long arm as in this case it is the short arm, 2, the first 2 represents uh, the region of the chromosome, the second 2 is the band of that region and the final number represents the subband of the band. So I hope I've made myself clear. Now this system enables us to accurately identify even small structural anomalies within the smallest subdivisions of the segments of chromosome at its exact location. Going on to what is DNA. 
DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the blueprint of life consisting of a double helix of two polynucleotide chains that run anti-parallel and this model was first established by James Watson and Francis Crick. Now let, let, let us try uh, knowing about the basic uh, building block of a nucleic acid that is the deoxyribonucleic acid in this case. This is nothing but a nucleotide which makes the building block or which forms the nucleic acid. Now, the nucleotide has three components. It has a nitrogenous base, it has a deoxyribose sugar and a phosphate group. Now the nitrogenous bases can either be purines or pyrimidines like they can either be adenine, guanine which are purines or cytosine, thymine which are pyrimidines. Then apart from this the polynucleotide chain is constructed by linking the 5 dash end of uh, uh, one pentose ring to the 3 dash end of the other pentose ring by phosphodiester bonds. Also, the adenine, the bases pair with each other. Adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. Adenine and thymine share a double bond of hydrogen, whereas guanine and cytosine form a triple hydrogen bond. Now, if you consider one complete turn of uh, the helix, uh, that is 360 degrees, starting from here up to here, it contains around 10 base pairs of nucleotides and the distance is around 3.4 millimeters in length. It consists of uh, a minor groove as you can see here and it also consists of a major groove. This is what uh, a double helical structure looks like and is made up of. Now a single segment of DNA, sections of this DNA are nothing but genes and these genes they code for one complete functional polypeptide chain or one complete functional protein which carries out the function in the body. So what is a gene? Gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for RNA. Each gene is a sequence within the nucleic acid that represents a single protein. Now this word was derived from another word called pangene uh, which means uh, to give birth or to become and gene was derived uh, from this word pan gene by Johansson in 1908 sorry 1909 now um, pan gene was originally given by Darwin but um, uh, Johansson felt that using pan gene as this pan gene that pan gene would be an elaborate term so he simplified that term by using the last three letters and from then on it was uh, called as Gene. I have a small video uh, to show how um, genes play a role in protein synthesis and how these proteins carry out the various functions in the body. So let's see with the help of a video. When a gene is uh, switched on, an enzyme called the RNA polymerase attaches to the short uh, to the start of the gene. Now it moves along the DNA making a strand of mRNA out of the free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the, G, uh, uh, to the mRNA and this process is called transcription. Now before the mRNA can be used as a template for the production of a protein, it needs to be processed. Now this uh, involves removing and adding of sections of RNA and the mRNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm called the ribosomes will go and bind onto the mRNA. The ribosomes read the code of mRNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. Now there are 20 different types of amino acids. The tRNA molecules, which are the transfer RNA molecules, they carry the amino acids to the ribosomes. Now the mRNA is read three bases at a time. As each triplet is read, a tRNA de delivers the corresponding amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids 
and once the last amino acid has been added to the chain the chain will fold and then form a complex three dimensional shape to form the protein or the mature protein which carries out the particular function of that gene so basically what happens is the dna undergoes transcription wherein a particular segment of dna is copied into the rna that is the messenger rna it is taking the message from the dna by an enzyme that is rna polymerase then there is a process of translation wherein the messenger rna is decoded by the ribosome to produce a specific amino acid chain or a polypeptide chain this polypeptide chain once completed would fold and form a three dimensional structure into a mature protein that protein carries out the particular function and hence we see gene expression